Let me greet all of you this morning in the name that is above every name. We greet you in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And it's to him that we owe all of our praise. Amen. So let us lift up the name of the Lord today, for indeed the Lord is worthy of all of our praise. Amen. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalms 104, the 104th division of the psalm, where the psalmist simply says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Amen. He calls for the children of Israel to bless the Lord. Amen. His call to bless the Lord is the call to praise the Lord. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I got a reason to praise the Lord. He's been good. He's been kind. He's been faithful. He's been long-suffering. We ought to praise the name of the Lord. The psalmist in Psalms 104 praises God because he's the God of creation. And as he looked at the order of creation, he says, in the order of creation, I see a God who is the God of provision. Amen. If you're glad you serve a God of provision, you ought to bless his name to Today. If you're God, if you're glad He provided clothes on your back, food on your table regular creature conference, you got a reason to praise the Lord. Amen. So we bless the name of the Lord here on this blessed Lord's day. Come on and join me in a word of prayer here on this day. God, how we thank you for blessing us to assemble here in your house once again. We thank you for not only allowing us to assemble in person, but we thank you right now even for those who are assembled uh, virtually. And God, we thank you for allowing us to gather together. So we pray, God, in our gathering that you would be in the midst of us. We want to feel your divine presence knowing that you are with us, filling us with your precious Holy Spirit. So God, we welcome you in this place right now in the name of Jesus. We not only welcome you, God, we invite you in here. Come, come on and fellowship with us for a little while, Lord, as we worship you, amen, as the God of creation, but also the God of salvation. So we gather to thank you that you are a delivering kind of God. You've delivered us from danger seen and unseen. So that, for that, God, we give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you for delivering us even from our own selves. Truth be told, God, sometimes we can be our worst enemy. But thank you that you protected us not only from dangers on the outside, but the dangers even lurking on the inside. So right now, God, purge us and prepare us. To receive from you what you have in store for us on this day. And then God will be ever so careful to give you all the praise. And to give you all the glory. Even at this worship hour God we still pray for our nation. We pray for uh, those still dealing with the tragedies of mass shootings. God, we pray not only for our uh, nation but we pray also for our local community. Even with the shooting on yesterday as part of a funeral celebration, God, we need you. We need you. We, we call on you. So we don't bless you with a blind eye to what's going on because of what is going on. We need you. We need you to bless us. We need you to be with our officials locally and nationally. We, we need you, God to be with individuals who are working to try and make a difference. We need you, God, to help us overcome those who are standing in the way of progress. We need you, God, to move in an awesome way. So we bless you in spite of what's going on. We bless you because we know you can help solve what's going on. We bless you because you, no matter what's going on, is still worthy of our praise. So like the psalmist said in the midst of his troubles in Psalms 104, we will bless the Lord here on this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Let's give God some more praise here on today as we bless his name. Thank you so much. I want to say a special thank you to Reverend Hartsfield, amen, who held it down on last Sunday, amen, to God be good. Let's give God some praise for Reverend Hartsfield, amen, for blessing us 
On last Sunday, amen, we were with family, amen, as my nephew graduated from high school, amen. So uh, we, we're grateful uh, for, for graduations. We still bless our graduates, amen, who are, who, are, who are matriculating, amen. And so we thank God for, 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 for graduations, amen. We also thank you for your continued faithfulness and your areas of giving. We thank God for you as you continue to uh, support, amen, the work of the ministry because you do what you do. It enables us to continue to do what we do as we strive to be the church in the community for the hearts of the community. Thank you for your continued acts of faithfulness. Amen. And again, you may continue to, to we, we, we encourage you to continue to be faithful. Amen. Knowing that generous hearts changes hearts. Amen. And so we thank God for all that you have done and continue to do by way of supporting the ministry. And if you're newly watching us, amen, and you want to be able to support, amen, there's a couple of ways you can do that. Amen. You can go download Givelify and search for First African Baptist Church Lexington. Amen. Because there's several First African Baptist churches uh, across the nation, but you want the one in Lexington, amen, and you can give through Giblify. You may also, amen, uh, give by mailing in your, uh, your, 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 your love offerings and gifts to 465 Price Road, uh, Lexington, Kentucky, 40506, or you can just bring them by the church, amen. You can do it on Sunday mornings or even during the course of the week, amen. There's a mail slot. You come to our apartment side complex of the church and come up the ramp. You'll see our mail slot, and you can uh, give that way as well. So we welcome you, amen, to continue to support, uh, continue to help us to continue to touch people with the gospel and with the love of Jesus Christ, amen. If you love the Lord, say amen. 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 If you're glad the Lord loves you, say amen. And we bless you also in our virtual land as well. Come on, let's receive this praise team. They come and bless us here on this blessed Lord's day, amen. Blessings and glory, glory and 
Yeah. 
indeed. We serve a God who deserves being magnified, who deserves being glorified. And the psalmist said, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. So the Lord indeed is worthy of all of our praise. We think about how good God has been we cannot help but to give him praise and to give him thanks he's been mighty good have I got a witness the Lord's been mighty mighty good we thank God for his for his presence As my, you to hear some of the senior saints say, I wouldn't serve a God that I couldn't feel every now and then. So we thank God for his presence. If you're grateful, give God some more praise today. We bless the name of the Lord. We thank God for our music ministry here on today. We give God Thanks for them. We thank God as well for our hospitality ministry work that you do week after week. Our audio video ministry, thank you so much uh, for all that you do. And as well as our health ministry and our deacons, we just are indeed grateful for all of the hands that come together to help us um, to lead us in worship week after week. Let's give them all another hand today as well. I want to say thank you to all of those who made it out on this past Thursday to our Douglas Park inaugural summer worship series, Worship in the Park, amen. And we had a wonderful time out at Douglas Park on this past uh, Thursday. And so uh, we're grateful to the Georgetown Neighborhood Association, Neighborhood Association, Georgetown Street Neighborhood Association, amen, for all that they do to impact uh, our uh, West End community. Amen, 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 and amen. To God be the glory here on this Lord's Day. We are, uh, haven't um, been focusing on it too much lately, but I want to return our attention to our theme for the year. Amen. Our theme for the year is answering the call to bear fruit in the 22. Amen. We want to return to that theme a little bit here on today as we uh, want to encourage us to continue even as we enter into the uh, summer months. Amen. We're still striving to be fruit bearers. Amen. Uh, as, as servants of the king. And so with, with, with that idea in mind this morning, I want to invite you uh, to Exodus chapter 3. Verse 1, and I encourage you to keep your Bibles open, whether it's on your electronic device or your hard copies, amen. Uh, keep, keep, them, keep them open today, amen. For we'll be uh, looking at several pieces of scripture uh, that I won't necessarily read in your hearing, but we'll be working with, and you can read it in your spare time. I invite you in your spare time to read Exodus 2. 11 through 25, and we'll be working, Lord willing, from this Exodus section uh, here during this month of June. Amen. So if you want to read up and read ahead, you can, you can read this Exodus 2 and 3 uh, in your spare time. Exodus 3, verse 1 says, now Moses, amen, that's it, now Moses. We want to use for a subject this morning, the snapshot of a great fruit bearer, amen. Exodus 3, first verse, of, verse 1 says, now Moses, amen, the snapshot of a good or a great fruit 
bearer. Amen. On June 17, 2021, President Joe Biden signed a bill making what is considered to be the longest running African American holiday, Juneteenth, an official holiday in America. Juneteenth commemorates the effective end of slavery in the United States. Although a man, President Abraham Lincoln, signed the Emancipation Proclamation on January the 1st, 1863, the complete end of slavery didn't come until 1865. Juneteenth, in short, which is short for June 19th, marks the day when General Gordon Granger and federal troops arrived in Galveston, Texas on June the 19th, 1865, and read General Orders Number 3, and I quote, the people of Texas are informed that in accordance with a proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves are free. Amen. Juneteenth is the celebration of the commemoration of the end of slavery as we knew it then here in this country. I understand we have a long ways to go, but I thank God that God has brought us a mighty long ways. Amen. And so Juneteenth, amen, June the 19th is a celebration of the freedom given to those who were enslaved in this country. So uh, throughout this nation, throughout the month of June, there will be activities celebrating the commemoration of emancipation. So my brothers and sisters, if you don't mind, I would like to follow uh, or use this theme of freedom. Amen. Uh, to guide us into looking at what I see in the text this morning or around the text as uh, a snapshot of a great fruit bearer. I want to look at this aspect of freedom to see if this perspective of freedom might assist us in answering the call to bear fruit in the 22. When we arrive at our text, we arrive at a familiar figure, amen, and this figure is a brother by the name of Moses. Moses, our center of attention this morning, that great emancipator, freedom fighter, and prince of Egypt, amen, uh, has for us, I believe, some characteristics that can help us to be great fruit bearers for the Lord, amen. When we think about how good God has been to us, we ought to want to give our best to God. So join me as I look at what I perceive to be the snapshot of a great fruit bearer. When we get to the call narrative of Moses in Exodus chapter number 3, chapter 3 verse 1 starts off with the phrase, now Moses. When you continue to read, it will read that now Moses or while Moses was tending the flock, of his father-in-law, amen, uh, there in Median, amen, there at Mount Horeb, he met the Lord. But before we get to the now Moses of Exodus 3 and 1, we need to deal with the when Moses of Exodus 2, 11 and the following verses. We can't get to the now before we first deal with the when because before Moses could get to do what he did in Exodus 3 and following, he had to go through a process of development in Exodus 2, 11 through 25. It tells you and I that great fruit bearers must undergo development. Amen. Might I also suggest that great fruit bearers never stop developing. Amen. If you are a fruit bearer, amen, you ought to be growing day by day, hour by hour, year by year. Amen. And I would also suggest when I look at the timeline connected with Moses' life, you're never too old to grow. Have I got a witness? Because we learn from Moses that something happened at the age of 40, then something else happened at the age of 80. Amen. Moses didn't get his call till he got his senior citizen benefit. So I don't care how old you are this morning, the Lord still can use you to do a great work 
for God. Before we get to the now Moses, in Exodus 3.1, Exodus 2.11 says, when Moses was grown, when he was grown, he went out to his brethren, or he went to go visit his brethren, and he looked on their burdens. Amen. Exodus 2.11 says that now when Moses was grown, <laughs> when Moses had grown up, Moses uh, shows us some things that happened as a result of his maturation. Because, see, you can be grown in body, but yet still be a child in mind. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we don't want to just be grown in body, but we also want to be grown up in mentality. And one of the ways you can measure how mature you are is your perspective in regards to other people. Notice now Moses, the Bible says in verse 2, 11, uh, Exodus 2, 11, that when Moses was grown, he went out to his brother, which tells me, number one, the first characteristic I see in this great fruit bearer is that Moses desired something different. Amen. Moses desired something different. Amen. According to Acts Seven, the report of Stephen, Moses was about 40 years old at the timing of the text. So if Moses was about 40, amen, man, Moses had become a mature adult, amen. And let me just pause right here for somebody that's 21, 22, 24, and thank you, grown. No, you're still growing. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah. You, you don't know it all just yet. You're still developing. You're still becoming. So don't, so, so don't, 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 don't think you got it all just yet. Amen. Moses doesn't make a defining move in life until he's 40. And when he gets there, amen, uh, he arrived at a certain place in life that he wanted something different. Uh, he wanted something different than the pleasures of the palace. Because Moses was a prince of Egypt. You know the backdrop to Moses. Amen. His mother had him. But because of that decree in Egypt that every male child should be killed. Amen. Moses' mother had him. Then by faith placed him in the Nile River in a basket where Pharaoh's daughter was bathing. And Pharaoh's daughter drew, amen, Moses out of the water. Amen. Paid his own mama to take care of him. And then she sent him back to Pharaoh's daughter where she adopted. Moses into the family. Moses was royalty, but there came a point in time in his life where Moses wanted more than the plushness of the palace. Amen. Matter of fact, Moses wanted something different. Amen. And he wanted something different, amen, for somebody other than himself. And that is one of the signs of true grown-upness. When you get to a point to where you want something better for somebody more than yourself. Only a child wants stuff just for themselves. Only a child stays focused on themselves. Only a child is selfish and spotlights only themselves. But when you get older, amen, and you mature in mind, you will discover life is more than just about you. Moses wanted something different different because he wanted something better for somebody more than himself what did he want what did he want he wanted he wanted something better for people that he saw who were oppressed uh, he he got grown but he never forgot home amen he got grown and he but yet he still remembered his brother and so the bible says there came a point in time where he went out to go visit his brother and he looked out on their burdens. He, he looked to make a difference. He, he looked to see how he might make life better for somebody other than himself. So the text says that when he went out, he went out he saw their burdens. The word burden in 211 means forced labor. Amen. For the word burden, amen, means again load, but the root of the word means charge, which means hey, the, the load they were charged to carry. Moses looked on their forced labor. And Moses looked on their enslavement. And Moses said, when I look and see what I see and I look at where I am, I don't want them to remain in the place that they are. I want something better for my people. 
asking me. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. So Moses, the story says that, that, that when he went out to observe what was going on, he looked up uh, and he saw an Egyptian, text says, beating a Hebrew. Verse 12 says, Moses, seeing this, could not sit idly by and just watch the Egyptian beating on the Hebrew. Text says that Moses looked around in both directions to make sure the coast was clear. And Moses sprang into action. What did Moses do? Moses smote or Moses killed the Egyptian that was beating the Hebrew brother. Amen. Moses, 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 Moses did the wrong thing, but he did it for the right reason. Uh, when, when we look at the text, it, 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 I wish I had time to really dissect it if you don't, but, but, but in passing, uh, the text says in verse 11 that the, 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 the Egyptian was beating the Hebrew. Then it says, and Moses killed the Egyptian. This is where our English doesn't do the Hebrew justice because the way it's narrated is the same Hebrew word for beating in verse 11 is the same Hebrew word for killed in verse 12. What it equates is is that Moses was looking to equalize an unequal situation. He looked and saw the Egyptian beating to death, not whipping. Text is clear. He's beating. He's beating. He's beating him to death. And Moses said, I cannot sit by and watch this Egyptian beat to death my brother. So he sprung into action to deliver his brother. Ah, I'm not condoning what Moses did, but the way the text is narrated is narrated to suggest that Moses, wanting something different, stepped in to become an equalizer. What I want to suggest is, is that fruit bearers are difference makers because they attempt to be equalizers. Amen. They attempt to make life better for others. And every now and then, you cannot sit idly by while others are dying around you. You cannot just sit by and watch stuff going on. When somebody is being taken advantage of, look, the Egyptian represents a system of oppression, represents a systematic issue. And Moses decided he would try to address a problem. Again, Moses would have to run because Pharaoh would find out. What he did, but what he did, he did, he did because he thought he was doing the right thing. We don't condone Moses' act of murder, but we can at least, amen, compliment him for springing into action, amen. He was trying to make something better by trying to address uh, an equity that was happening before his eyes. His, this Egyptian was using his status and his position to beat to death. A Hebrew slave, Moses says, not so. So he decided that he was do what he did because he wanted something different. Amen. That's what happened on day one when Moses went and observed what was going on with his brethren. Day two, he goes back out, still wanting something different. Text tells us he saw two Hebrews fighting. It says Moses wanted something different for somebody better than himself. But then because Moses wanted something different, he stepped in to stop the violence. Amen. Ah, Yeah, he saw two brothers going at it. He saw two brothers fighting. Moses understood that if they were going to make it out of the plight they were in, they could not make it beaten up on one another. He recognized that, 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 that they could not make it like that, that needed unity, but the problem is that they were engaging in violent conduct against one another and because Moses wanted something different he stepped in as a mediator to stop the violence amen 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 that is a cry all around America and even in our city we need to do something to stop 
the violence. And every now and then, fruit bearers, amen, amen, spring into action to do things, to make things better in their local communities. That's the reason why we continue to strive as Bill to promote, amen, a violence prevention strategy in our city. That's why we pray for others, amen, who are working to address violence in our city. Look at what Moses did. Moses stepped in to stop the violence. It's one thing to pray for a change. But it's another thing to see if you can impact change. And we want to encourage, amen, others and all who are able to do whatever we can to help stop the violence. Moses, as a great fruit bearer, wanted something different. He wanted something different for somebody other than himself. And because he wanted something different, he stepped in to stop the violence. My brothers and my sisters, Moses shows us, amen, that fruit bearers can make a difference. Have I got a witness? I don't care how bad things may get. Fruit bearers must always remember fruit bearers can make a difference when Moses was grown. Moses decided he wanted something different. And just in passing, let me suggest to somebody who feels like you are stuck in life. Uh, and, and, and you don't like where you are. Might I suggest you might want to do something different. <laughs> if what you've been doing hadn't gotten you beyond where you want to be right now, Somebody said the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. I suggest <laughs> you might want to try something different. Moses, once he grew up, decided he wanted something different. Something different and better for somebody other than himself. So he stepped in to try and stop the violence. Where it says that after he killed that Egyptian, uh, he buried him in the sand. Now again, he buried him not because he was afraid. I contend he buried him because he didn't want to be made. Uh, in the aspect that he didn't want to found out that he's part of the royal group but he really down for the slaves in the field. <laughs> and every now and then, change doesn't happen just from the outside in. Sometimes change occurs from somebody on the inside working as well. <laughs> uh, so, so be careful of how you look at folk on the inside. Everybody on the inside is not a sellout. Let me say one more time. Everybody on the inside is not a sellout because sometimes it takes folks on the inside to make change for others who are on the outside. <sighs> Moses didn't want to be made out just yet. He's still scoping out his plan as to what's going, how, how, how he's going to make a difference. And in the course of that, amen, when we went to break up them brothers, amen, one said, who are you? Who made you judge and ruler over us? Who assigned you this authoritative role of deciding who among us is right and who among us is wrong? Are you going to kill? Different word than kill in verse 12. The word kill here, he says murder. Amen. As opposed to other killing, it's avenge, an act of justice. Uh, he says, are you going to murder me uh, like you murdered that Egyptian? Moses said, well, I guess it's out the bag. Uh, that, 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 that Hebrew slave I say the other day, he went and told what I did for him. About like Jesus, when he was healed for, he said, don't tell nobody. And they go tell everybody. <laughs> and the word gets out. Moses said, I've got to leave. Moses fled. Text says in verse 16 that he made his way. 15, he made his way down to the land of Median. Sat down by a well. And then the daughters of rule. 
uh, Jethro also by name. Uh, uh, his daughters, uh, shepherdesses, uh, they showed up with the flock to water their flocks. And when they get there, and after they drawn the water to water their flock, the story goes that uh, some shepherds came up, drove them away. But Moses, amen, was still Moses. <laughs> he was Moses in Egypt. He was the same Moses down in Median. Moses not only desired something different, but Moses continued to be something different. Moses was a different kind of a dude. Moses stood up for the little man in Egypt, and he stood up for the little man down in Median. When Moses looked up and saw what the bullies were doing to the women, Moses said, ah, it ain't going down like this. I like the way the text reads. It reads, it says in verse number 17, but Moses stood up. He stood up on behalf of what I call the little man. <laughs> he stood up on behalf of the weak that was in the text. He stood up for those who needed assistance. Amen. Remember I told you a sign of maturity is how you look and how you observe and what you do for other people. Moses couldn't help himself. He tried to do the right thing in Egypt and it went sour on him. Tried to do the right thing and it didn't work out. But what I liked about this is, is that even though he tried to do the right thing and it didn't work out in Egypt, it didn't stop him from doing the right thing when he was down in Median. Might I suggest to you that no matter how many times you try to do the right thing and it doesn't turn out the way you want it to turn out, don't grow weary in well-doing. Keep on trying to do the right thing. Because if it's in you, you just can't help yourself. <laughs> Amen. And I just believe that fruit bearers have something in them that won't allow them to sit idly by when somebody is in need of assistance. Moses, 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 uh, he continued to be something different. Yeah, he did. He continued, amen, because he continued to stand for what was right. Even though it was on a smaller scale down in Median, I like that because Moses uh, was the same whether it was uh, for the Hebrews or he was the same whether it was for a group of Medianite women. In other words, Moses was not a discriminator when it came to doing good. He didn't do good just for once at not because good was in him. And that's what I like about this because it says fruit bearers don't decide who they want to bear fruit for. Fruit bearers are just fruit bearers and bear whenever they get a chance to be a blessing to somebody else. It doesn't matter whether they are from the same side of the track as you. It doesn't matter if they have the same skin color as you. Doing good is doing good no matter who you're doing good for. Moses continued to stand up for the little man. Got to get out here, amen. But Moses also continued to live life without becoming a bitter man. He could have become bitter because of what happened to him in Egypt. In Egypt, he was a prince. In Egypt, he enjoyed plushness. In Egypt, he was part of royalty. And in trying to do the right thing, he lost all of it in one day. So much so to where he ended up going from being in the palace in Egypt to being a shepherd of sheep down in Midian. Moses could have become a bitter man. Moses could have become a resentful man. Moses, 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 Moses could have decided this is not what I signed up for. The heck with it all. I'm just going to do me and be me. But Moses couldn't go out like that. 
Moses wasn't wired that way. Moses was a great fruit bearer because Moses refused to become a bitter man. So much so to where even though he had lost everything, amen, down in Median, amen, Jethro tells Moses, Moses, come and share my house, share my food, and if you would, dwell with me, and I give you my daughter in marriage. And I like what it says in verse 21 that Moses was content to live with his father-in-law and Zipporah as his wife. Praise the Lord for contentment in life. Amen. Because Moses says, you know what? I take what the Lord handed me and was given to me and I will embrace it because the Lord is still a good God. And I want to suggest to you, whatever you may or may not lose, amen, God still has a way of blessing you. Amen. He blessed him with a son. He named his son Gershon, which means stranger. Amen. He said, I was a stranger in a foreign land. But what Moses discovered is that the same God, amen, uh, that drew him, allowed him to be drawn out of the Nile in Egypt would be the same God that would keep him as a shepherd down in Median. I want to suggest that no matter where you find yourself in life, God will be right there with you. Out of here, Moses was a great fruit bearer because he desired something different. He was a great fruit bearer because he continued to be something different. And another thing that made him a great fruit bearer is that Moses was God's answer to the cry for something different. As this narrative ends today, we get to the now Moses of Exodus 3 and 1. Because there was a cry made in Exodus 2, 23 through 25. The Bible tells us that there in, in, in Exodus 2 and 23, yeah, the, the, the king of Egypt that had enslaved the Israelites died. And at that particular point in time, after the death of the king of Israel, there arose a cry from the people, the children of Israel. And what I like about the cry in Exodus 2 and 23 and 25 is that it was a collective cry. In other words, the people, because of their condition, all of a sudden decide to cry out for justice. Uh, yeah, it seems to suggest uh, that when there was an opportunity, the people decided enough was enough. Uh, there came a point in time uh, in the life of God's children uh, to where they said, uh, we don't want to go through this any longer. Uh, there came a point uh, in time in the life of God's children that God's children decided to cry out for a change. Uh, there came a point uh, in the life of God's children to where they decided to cry out for something different. Uh, what I'm trying to tell you uh, is that sometimes uh, things won't change uh, until enough people get on one accord and cry out for something Something different. Uh, I know uh, that as we strive for gun regulations in this nation, uh, I just believe uh, if enough people uh, give a collective cry, uh, there will become uh, something different. Uh, have I got a witness? Uh, it was a collective cry, uh, but it was also an effective cry uh, because the Bible says uh, that when they cried, uh, then they cried out out for justice. Uh, there was a God uh, that was sitting high uh, and their cry rose up loud enough uh, to where even the next on the throne in Egypt ignored the cry. Uh, there was a God uh, who heard their cry. Uh, anybody glad uh, you serve a God uh, that still hears uh, the cry of his children. Uh, it was not only an effective cry, uh, a collective cry, uh, it it was an effective cry, uh, and I still hear God tell uh, old King Solomon uh, in Second Chronicles 7 to. 7 and 14. Um, if my people uh, who are called by my name uh, will humble themselves and pray uh, and seek my face uh, and turn from their wicked ways, uh, then I will hear from heaven uh, and I will heal their land. Uh, anybody still believe today uh, that God is able to hear and to heal? Uh, that's what I like about the text is, is that once they got on one accord uh, and once 
because they cried out for help. Uh, God dispatched uh, Moses, the fruit bearer. I want to tell somebody, uh, hang on in there. Uh, help will come after a while. Uh, and I want to tell somebody else today, uh, no matter who you are uh, and no matter where you are, uh, no matter how much you have, uh, no matter how much you don't have, uh, I want you to know uh, that God can uh, use you uh, to answer somebody else's cry. Uh, anybody glad today uh, that God still uh, has servants uh, who will hear and answer cries? Because uh, I'm here today because uh, God used uh, somebody else uh, to help me out uh, when I was crying for help. Uh, anybody else got that testimony that somebody uh, stepped in uh, and helped you out? Uh, somebody uh, stepped in and lifted you up you didn't get to where you are by your own merit but God used somebody along the way to help lift you to where you are I'm glad today that God can answer prayer ain't God alright and I know he can make a difference and every now and then when I get a little down and wonder is it all worth it I remember another man by the name of Jesus I'm quite sure he had some doubts along the way but I'm glad today he hung on in there went up Calvary's hill and he made a difference and they buried him in a borrowed tomb but early Sunday morning I believe Jesus says yes it was worth it I made it over and I did it because I had y'all in mind. Anybody glad that he did it for you and he did it for me? Thank God he is able to still make a difference. Moses. I look at a familiar character familiar story hopefully to draw some encouragement from this fruit bearer this emancipator of Israel to see that if you have a desire for something different God can use you God can use us to make a difference because fruit bearers are difference makers and our community needs some difference makers. That means our community needs some fruit bearers. Answering the call to bear fruit in the 22. God bless you. Come on, let's extend this invitation to Christian discipleship. Your journey as a fruit bearer begins... with you giving your life to Jesus. If you have not accepted Christ in your life, we welcome you. you may come, you may call 859-252-7191. Come, 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 come. He's got a fruit bearing work for you, but he needs you to be part of the fruit bearers team. Or maybe you, you've you given your life to Christ. You're looking for somewhere where you can grow in your faith and grow in your fruit-bearing capabilities. We invite you and welcome you to unite with us. By letter of Christian experience, we welcome you. You may come or you may, again, reach out to us. We'll give you the phone number 859-252-7191. Or you may also reach out to us through Facebook. Facebook page as well as our website contact us on our website or maybe you're here today and you just need prayer we welcome you to we welcome you to come is there one today is there one today we welcome you is there one
church say amen we pray that you have been blessed by today's worship experience in person and virtually to God be the glory let's keep each other lifted in our prayers amen as we strive to answer the call to bear fruit in the 22 amen as we thank God for being the great deliverer he wants to use us to continue to help bring deliverance unto others for truly we serve a God who is the God of deliverance if you love the Lord say amen God bless you. Please enjoy the rest of your week. Enjoy this beautiful Sunday. Amen. Enjoy the rest of your week as well. Come on and receive the benediction here on today. God, how we thank you for this worship experience. We pray that hearts have been touched. Uh, we pray that you have been pleased. And whatever we did, God, that was not pleased, forgive us. Help us to get it better the next time. But we thank you for this time, for this opportunity to gather and to worship your name. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest, rule, and abide with us, all of us, his forth now and forever. Let all of God's children say amen, amen, amen and amen. God bless you. Have a Bless the rest of the week. Amen. Remember, we love you. We love you. And God loves you too. God bless you.